Hey, hello, and welcome to this course. This course is about using the Python subprocess module. Subprocess is one of those modules that doesn't tend to get people very excited, but I think those people are wrong. Subprocess is a very cool module. I think it gives you superpowers. Why superpowers? Well, subprocess allows you to interact with your operating system from within a Python application. Now, how cool is that? Do you want to run a shell command, for example, or you want to launch another program or automate some command line tools or automate git commands or chain commands together using pipes? You can do all that and much more with subprocess. And this course, We'll get you started. So what is it you will be learning? Well, you will learn how to use the run function of this subprocess module. You'll also learn how to handle subprocess exceptions, how to communicate with processes, how to implement pipes. And firstly, we'll touch on what are pipes. And then finally, there is the use of the Popen constructor of the subprocess module. Now, this is in a bit more detail. We'll go through the overview of the subprocess module. Then you will learn the basic usage of the module. Then there are those subprocess exceptions, communication with processes, pipes, and the Popen class. Now, I'm very excited to go on this journey with you. Let's get started. In this lesson, you'll go through a quick overview of the subprocess module. Why is it called sub? process. Well, that module is used for launching processes from within Python. So these launched processes are called child processes and Python therefore is the parent process that spawns, I love that word, it spawns or it launches a child process. Now that process could be anything. It could be a GUI application, it could be the shell, or as you will see in your first example in the next video, it could even be Python itself. Now, the subprocess module was originally proposed and accepted for Python 2.4 as an alternative to the OS module. The examples in this course were tested with Python 3.10.12, but all you need if you want to code along is Python 3.8 or later. The documentation recommends using run for all cases it can handle. And for more special cases where run doesn't do what you want it to do, you can use the Popen class. The Popen class is the underlying class for the whole subprocess module. And what that means is that all the functions in the subprocess module are in fact convenience wrappers around the Popen constructor and its instance methods. And if that sounds confusing to you, it surely does to me, but worry not in a later video in this course, you will learn all about the Popen class. Now, during your research online, you might come across other functions than run. You might come across call or check call or check output, but these actually belong to the older subprocess API for Python 3.5 and earlier. But everything that these functions do, you can do with run as well. The subprocess module was proposed as an alternative to the OS module. Now, OS stands for operating system, and the OS module deals with operating system dependent functionality. Now, that is pretty low level stuff, and therefore, the subprocess module is also quite a low level utility. That means you might need to take account of which operating system you're working on, and you might have to deal with some other tricky details. Say you wanted Python to open a web browser. You could do that using subprocess, but you would need to deal with cross-platform and browser differences. A better choice potentially would be to just use the Python web browser module, which in fact uses subprocess under the hood, but it deals with those cross-platform and browser differences for you. But Having said that, subprocess is really useful for getting something done quickly. And with that in mind, you will build a quick timer example in the next lesson. In the previous video, you were given a quick overview of the subprocess module. 
In this video though, you'll dive into some code and learn the basic usage of the subprocess module. In step one, you're going to create a simple timer in Python. And then in step two, you're going to run this simple timer as normal. So from the terminal, there's nothing new so far. But in step three, you're going to run this simple timer, not from the terminal, but from within another Python application. And that's of course, what you will need subprocess for. Now you can download the code or you can choose to write it from scratch. That is up to you. So depending on your choice, go to your favorite IDE and either open or create a new file called simple underscore timer dot py. And this is the code. This timer doesn't do very much. It just starts by printing this line of code here. It then loops five times. And every time it loops, it prints a dot. And because we set end to being empty, it will print the five dots on the same line. We flush the buffer and then we wait one second before we go to the next iteration in the loop. And at the end of that, it will print done. Now, you might have noticed that the underscore here, we are using an underscore as a loop variable here because the loop variable isn't being used in this loop. Now, if that is not entirely clear to you, or if you want to find out more about the use of underscores in Python, I have included a link to a very good video course, which incidentally was done by me. So that explains everything you need to know about the use of underscores in Python. Okay, so that was step one. You have created your simple timer. Step two, let's run this timer as normal from the terminal. So let's go to your terminal and make sure that you are in the right folder or the right directory. So where this py file is saved. And as always, you type Python, or if you're on Mac or some Linux distros, that will be Python 3. But in my case, it's Python and then simple underscore timer.py and hit enter. So it prints starting timer of five seconds. You see the five dots, one every second, and then it prints done. And that is the end of it. So that was step two. That was just to show you what this timer actually does. So now step three is we're going to run this timer from within another Python application. And that we will cover in the next lesson. In this lesson, you'll be using subprocess to run the timer Python app from within Python. So you'll be running it from within the REPL. So the first thing to do is to import subprocess. And then from subprocess, as per the documentation, you use run, but then you need to open a list of arguments. So the first word that we use in the terminal as well was Python. And the second word was simple underscore timer dot py. You then close the list and then close the brackets and then hit enter. And there you go. The timer starts, it says starting timer of five seconds. You have your five dots, it prints done. So that's as expected. And then it prints another line that says completed process and some things between brackets. Now, what this completed process is, we will talk about that in the next video. But for now, congratulations, because in your first example, you have launched from within Python, within the REPL, you have launched another Python process using subprocess. And that subprocess then runs the simple underscore timer.py app. Now, you might wonder why we would do that. Why would you run another Python module from within a Python module? You could just import a Python module if you needed it. There's usually no need for another Python module to be in a separate process. And you would be right in thinking that. Now, the reason you will be using Python as a subprocess in your examples is that Python works on all platforms. Although, as we saw for some Linux and Mac users, it needs to be Python 3. Subprocess is usually used though for launching processes other than Python. And in the next lesson, you will see an example.